welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions today i will be doing a very very short and only slightly overdue <laughs> february wrap up that is because i didn't read much that is because it was exam month so you will excuse the embarrassment but to be fair in the beginning of the year i never never read as much so this will be very humble and very short i do hope you enjoy it anyway because i still have opinions about everything I read, as usual, and you might notice that the shelves look a little bit different. Attack on Titan has moved, this shelf is almost empty, and this shelf is just waiting for Tokyo Ghoul to fill it. So, I guess I look forward to seeing how it was filled up throughout the year before the next bookshelf tour. Without further rambling, let's just get into it. As usual, I'm looking down at my Goodreads, if you're wondering why I'm doing that, I started the month off by reading Anne of Avonlea, but I didn't finish that this month because I'm not sure. It was sort of a soothing read and I was reading it occasionally, but I didn't really want the push to finish it. So the first actual book I finished, I tucked it in here so it's easier to find, is <laughs> Labyrinth of Evil by James Lucino. Now I already talked about this one, I believe, in a vlog. But I'm just gonna summarize and say my thoughts again. I gave this obviously five stars. This is part of the Revenge of the Sith trilogy. This goes before Revenge of the Sith. This is exactly the lead in into the movie. And this was published, I believe, before the movie, actually. The movie came out in 2005 and I think this was published in 2004. So it's very interesting how people kind of got a spoiler, I guess into how the whole thing starts but I really enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would because the first time I read it I thought it was a little bit boring and a chaotic and all over the place but now I read it slowly and sort of digested everything that was happening and to be fair this time I read it after <laughs> having watched the Clone Wars so I was more used to the chaotic world hopping and the random characters and all of the Jedi I know them now Last time I read this, I didn't know any of these people, and now I know all of them. So every time that, like, I don't know, Shakti shows up, I know who she is, and I know her character and the relationships between the Jedi, and I really appreciated it, especially Dooku's point of view, because it's very interesting. I know we never really get Sidious' point of view for a reason. <laughs> Obviously, he's the mastermind. But I really enjoyed the dark side point of view as like the Jedi are hunting them down and the very occasional snippets of Yoda. Mace was also very enjoyable which I didn't expect because I'm not the biggest fan of him. I like him a lot as a Jedi. Not that big of a fan of him as a character. <laughs> I think a lot of what happened to Anakin is because of how Mace treated him. But still, during the Clone Wars, they worked a lot together. So they kind of had also a funny relationship and a very unfair one. This isn't a Star Wars analysis video, but this book, I think, is not essential, but worth it. And very much better than what Disney did with Season 7 of the Clone Wars, trying to lead into Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> like, I know the Siege of Mandalore actually happened, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't in intended like that the way they did it because this was written literally before Revenge of the Sith with George's approval so obviously he didn't want to do it that way and I really loved this I hope that someday maybe they adapt to this because it's very enjoyable and I've been talking for way too long I loved the book I think it's worth it I love James Lucino he was literally carrying Star Wars books on his back alone <laughs> And I loved it. I have to get to Revenge of the Sith next, which I know will be painful. There will be a vlog for that, which is why I've been putting it off. But this was this was a delight. I'm going to do these in order because <laughs> it just kind of makes sense, even though I read The Dragon Reborn in between. But these were interesting, to say the least. I read, as you can see, 12 through 15 of Demon Slayer and I can't say it's the prettiest that I've ever seen but maybe that's just because it's not my personal taste. It's not as unappealing to me as Jujutsu Kaisen 
but it's definitely nowhere near <laughs> Tokyo Ghoul and Noragami, which are definitely the prettiest. Death Note is up there too, but I don't really remember it for the drawing. I remember it for the plot, so it's not really up there, but it was decent enough. I think the show did it way better. But that being said, I'm not that into Demon Slayer in general. <laughs> I just want to... Here's the thing. I never read the manga when I'm not that interested in the show, like I was with Demon Slayer. But the manga are also never finished. <laughs> There's very, very few manga that are anime that are actually finished. So I'm never interested in getting into a story that I'm not that into, knowing that it's nowhere near the ending. Which is why I didn't read almost any of the anime that I actually watched. But this is finished. <laughs> Apparently very rushed, but it's finished. So I said, you know what, just just go. You don't really want to wait for the anime to find out how it ends. So just finish those 11 volumes after the anime and be done with it. It's not going as quickly as I would like it to, but that's because I'm not that interested in it, I guess. So it's taking, taking me a bit of time. But I read four volumes. I think the arc just ended, so we're going into another one didn't love it there's so many like conveniences and naive scenes and stuff that's just not plausible not to me plausible but in universe it seems like okay isn't that a bit too much so i'm not a fan of this i have to say the anime adds the element of enjoying the animation and the soundtrack and the voice acting so I don't think I'd ever read this if I just didn't want to know the ending. But I will continue the anime. Will I ever think about this when I actually do read it? No. <laughs> Would I recommend it? I have no idea. I feel like even Jujutsu Kaisen has a bit more substance than this. But I will say that I appreciate how it's mostly about friendship and family. Because I don't think I could have also... <laughs> put up with the romance in this universe that's all I will say and yeah I think I gave most of them like three or four stars I think I gave two three stars two four stars because at, at times I was just shaking my head and like I, I can't even digest this if I suspend my disbelief and the other ones I think I gave them four stars because they were a lot more talking than fighting which I do always appreciate because it can be funny I think if they leaned into making this funny and like a comedy, not trying to make it a serious plot, I would have probably enjoyed it a lot more because there are funny scenes and interactions, but anytime that anything is supposed to be taken seriously, I'm just like, no, <laughs> I'm sorry, but no. To top the month off, month off, and you already saw this <laughs> in the video, Dragon Reborn. Here's an update of how much I tabbed it. It's a lot, <laughs> but I finished the 24 hour readathon with this. I timed it perfectly. So I ended it exactly at midnight. I love this book. <laughs> I mean, it's no surprise, but I realized that I read books one through like four a long time ago. Just for reference, I think I was reading these 2018 through 2020. So like since, <laughs> Second year of high school to fourth. I finished it at the end of fourth. That's one of the first vlogs that I did. It was a long time ago. <laughs> I refuse to accept the fact that 2018 was four years ago, but it feels like a long time ago. Like I remember everything, obviously everything that matters, but the little interactions and how certain things happen and when some characters are introduced, I didn't know that, that happened so early on, <laughs> for instance. Again, no spoilers. This is a little difficult to do without spoilers, like to gush without pointing out exactly what I loved. I apparently have difficulties with that, but this is the third book in a series, so I don't think I can really talk about anything. But again, also, it's been out for like 30 years. <laughs> How is it my problem you don't know what happens here? But since it's popular now, I'll be kind. I'll be kind. But... I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it because I felt feel like I read the latter half for so long that I became very fond of it. But I forgot how much I enjoyed the beginning because the chapters are hilariously short. Like I keep expecting them for, to go on for like another 30 pages and they're just 
done and I'm very confused because I think it took me way longer to read the second half <laughs> than it did the first couple of books. So that also kind of makes sense <laughs> that I felt like it was dragging because I was dragging with the books, which wasn't the book's fault, but I loved this. Absolutely loved this. It kind of helped that I read 300 pages all at once because it made it more engaging for me. Anything that slogged for even a little was not slogging because I was reading very quickly. I cannot recommend this series enough and you're probably sick to death of me saying it, but I don't care. My entire channel is called In Homage to Wheel of Time, so I don't care. <laughs> you're probably going to hear me talk about this almost in every single video where I read it or recommend it. But if you haven't yet, pick it up <laughs> because it's worth it. To be fair, this is one of the shorter books and it has like 600 pages. The next three, like this is a large hardcover. The next three have insane spacing. Like the pages are just full of words. It's not that many more pages than here, but it's a lot longer, I know, because I read the paperbacks back then. Like Lord of Chaos has over a thousand pages and it has maybe a hundred more than this one in the hardcover, which means they really, really packed it in tight. So I'm not looking forward to that. But aside from that little detail, it is so worth it. Every page means something. I caught so much foreshadowing now that I actually knew what's going on. Like I have all these tabs just mark spots where I was like, okay, so are you telling me that he literally knew what the scene from book 13 would look like in book three? <laughs> because that's some interesting plotting. I mean, we all, we all, all of our writers <laughs> have stuff that we know is going to happen right from the get go but it's very specific at times and I'm just impressed <laughs> if that makes any sense. So without rambling on <laughs> for too long, there is one thing I will say again, which I said in the vlog, but I feel like it needs repeating. It's not a spoiler, it's just a structure thing. The three main characters, the three guys, I mean, obviously the women are also the main characters, but you, you'll realize what I mean. The three guys are basically the main characters and there's a one one book for each of them in the series that doesn't feature them and this was Rand Rand being absent which is funny because it's called the dragon reborn but this one is Rand being absent and you could notice that because as soon as he came back I realized just how much I'd missed him <laughs> Like, I wasn't that upset when Matt or Perrin were absent because it made sense within their storyline. But you really feel that Rand is gone <laughs> because, because you do. <laughs> That's all I will say for this book. Aside from that, I loved everything. And I have to say there's one character that I hated the first time I read this, who's introduced here. But because I read all of the books and I grew to love her because her development is by far the best. I love her immediately now because I already love her so I have no more feelings of hate that I did in the beginning. She's won me over is all I'm saying. This has been a long rant but I have to compensate for the fact that this was a lame month. I am sorry. As usual this is the end of the video but I will still give you a rundown of what I'm reading currently because that's always interesting when I post into March. I started the month off with The Killing Joke because I bought the deluxe edition so I read The Killing Joke again. I think I read it also a couple of years ago. That was very good. <laughs> I'll talk more in the wrap up but yeah I read The Killing Joke. I'm also reading Volume 16 of Demon Slayer. I'm reading Vampire Academy because I'm buddy reading it with my best friend. So that will be a review. I'm still reading Anne of Avonlea and I want, I started reading Spinning Silver. I think I started that back in February, but I didn't finish it. So no spoilers for that one because we all know how much I talked shit about Uprooted. So I don't want to spoil my thoughts in any way. And is there anything else? And I have like the shadow rising next to my bed in the hopes of starting and finishing it while I am still on break. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you had fun. I try to talk more just to not make it a five minute video about the three books that I read. 
which I'm sorry about if you don't care about any of the particular books. But I still think it was fun. It was fun for me. I hope it was fun for you or at least mildly enjoyable if you're playing this in the background. In any case, a lot more videos because I plan to pre-film while I'm on break. <laughs> so I'm not an embarrassment who posts once a month because I actually do enjoy doing this a lot. In any case, let me know what you read in February, what your favorite books were. If you have better luck with reading than me in the beginning of the year, I would love to know that because I feel like I've always been slumpy <laughs> up until my birthday and then things get kickstarted into the year. So I will see you in the next video.